Hey guys, how are you doing? This is the fifth tutorial in the basics of programming. Today is a big day for you guys because today we're going to be going towards looping, the looping techniques of C. And uh, this is one of the most important things in the entire uh, C programming series because with this looping part, you can uh, do multiple number programs and there are multiple possibilities of what you can actually do with the looping technique. Now, basically there are two types of loops. One kind of loop is what we call the entry controlled loop and the other one is what uh, we, c we say the exit controlled loop. Okay, So we'll just go forward and open a Word document so that for you guys just to give you a theory on this. Uh, <coughs> Let's start with the entry controlled loops. Entry controlled loops and under that we have the for loop and the while loop. And uh, I don't really like those errors, you know, so I'm just going to change that. All right, and now uh another one we have is the exit controlled loops we won't call it a loop uh, actually we won't call it loops we'll call it only loop because there's only one loop under this and that is the do while loop all right so uh, these are basically two types of loops the entry controlled loop which uh, is actually for loop and the while loop and the other kind of loop is the exit control loop which consists of only one uh, actual loop that is the do while loop all right now the basic difference between uh, the entry control and the exit control loop is that uh, the entry control loops are actually they are controlled by a statement controlled by a statement at the beginning of the loop so basically this entry control loop are controlled by a statement at the beginning of the loop and the exit control loop uh, it is basically just the opposite we'll write that in a bullet again it is actually controlled by a statement at the end of the loop All right. So th that is the basic difference between the entry control and the exit control loop. The entry control loop is actually controlled by a s by this by a statement at the beginning of the loop, and uh, for the uh, like the exit control loop, it is controlled by a statement at the end of the loop. Now there's another difference between these two uh, entry control and exit control loops, and the second difference between these is that. This loop uh, will be executed only if the statement is correct. All right, that is, if the statement gives uh, a true value, rather. All right, so uh, that's the second uh, point in the entry control loop. And for the exit control loop, we will find out in a moment as we do the programs that uh, this loop will be executed at least once even if the statement is false. Alright, so we'll just uh, F7 that and we see at least is a space in between alright so you just get the basic idea right the entry control loop would be uh, now let's just see I just try one thing here let me just see uh, can we just get that in a little uh, two column thing um, I don't know what just happened alright I'll just uh, undo that. All right. Uh, actually, the thing is that for the entry control loop, we have a 
let's just reduce the size so that you guys can see the entire thing at once yeah that's better alright th the entry control loops are of two types the for loop and the while loop and the entry control loop are characterized by two statements over here that is it is controlled by a statement at the beginning of the loop and the second point which, you, which we need to understand in this entry control loop is that this loop will be executed only if the statement is true now for the exit control loop which basically is the do while loop it is controlled by a statement at the end of the loop and the second point which is the most important point of the exit control loop is that this loop will be executed at least once even if the statement is false alright now let's just minimize that and go uh, take you through a uh, paint diagram over here now um, let's see let's just say that we have the program control over here and it basically enters this loop now by a loop what we mean is that we need to check a statement and if that statement returns a true value this loop will be executed it will again check the statement to see if that statement is still correct once again if it is true it will once again execute the statement and if it finds that it's true again it would once again execute this statement well obviously in this uh, true part we have different things like we can have a printf over here or uh, rather we can have a section of a code which uh, which we need to execute alright and uh, for this statement we also have a little thing we call the incrementation that is uh, we we actually need to increment the value of a variable and to check that whether that variable still fits the statement or not. We'll get that. We'll you will understand this a lot better at a program. We'll get that too. But uh, let's just take you through one more time the statement and the true part. Uh, the program controller is over here. It enters the for loop or the while loop or the do while. The do while is just the exit control. We're seeing the entry control here. That's why the statement is at the beginning and that statement will be checked for true or false and if it is true it will once again run this statement but the moment it finds it false that's the program counter will come over here and ultimately the false part will be executed it will have a printf or a section of the code and at the end it will come up to the end portion of the code so as long as the statement is true this loop will be executed over and over and over again so that is basically the concept of looping now, uh, before we get to the program, I have a little thing here which I've written on my own. It's uh, just to give you a little idea about what an increment and a decrement is. You all know uh, this is the integer type variable int for that we write percentage %t, the floating point variable for, we, uh, for that we write percentage %f, for the car variable as a character we write the percentage %f, and the modulus operator will get that in, an, in, in another program. And in this program we're going to need the increment and the decrement, so and the square root is sqrt. Alright, the increment and the decrement is when we write plus plus, we mean that the editor needs to increment the value of a variable by one. And it can only be incremented by one, or if you write minus minus, it means it the editor needs to decrement the value of the variable by one. Alright, so with that in mind, let's just go forward and check a program over here. In this program, we're going to use the for loop, and uh, we have taken a variable i, and we have already given a uh, number to it that's i is equal to 5 and now uh, we're gonna have a little for statement here for after for we need a bracket and now after the for uh, in the bracket we're gonna have three things that is uh, number one is the initialization that is we say what i is equal to now we're gonna set i equal to 0 at the beginning we have taken i equal to 5 and now we have initialized i back to 0 okay so um, mm, let's uh, after i is equal to zero. Let's say let's just take over here i. We don't need any five. Uh, all right. So i is equal to zero at the beginning, and then we say mm, i should be less than or equal to five. All right. And then we say let's increment i by one every step. And in the for for loop we need to have curly braces this is mandatory because we n we will have more than one statement obviously and uh, then we say print the value of i we're gonna have a new line because every time it prints it will uh, it, it will be all messed up then so we need to print that in a new line uh, new line then percentage d because we're printing an integer after all and then the value of i and then we close the curly braces and we say get ch 
now let's just see what ha what will happen with uh, what the program will do is uh, basically it will first see that i is initialized uh, as a variable it doesn't have a value and then we're starting a for loop in the for loop this is called the initialization where we initialize the value of the variable to a certain number and then this is the condition uh, this is the condition which the for loop needs to check as i said that uh, it will have a statement over it that statement is basically i should be um, less than or equal to 5 so every time i gets incremented at first we start with i is equal to 0 and then we are this is the incrementation or we can have a decrementation um, so every step after this curly braces it starts from here prints the value of i ends here and it checks that i is still uh, from after 0 first it will print the value of i which is 0 it will go up and see that it will increment i by 1 so uh, that would be i 0 plus 1 would be 1 which is still less than 5 so it will print out the value of i again which is 1 at that point once again it will increment the value of i which would be 2 at that time it will still check the condition it will find that 2 is still less than 5 and once again it will print 2 so it will go up to 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 at the moment it becomes 6 after 5 after printing the value of i which would be 5 at that time it would go up to here and check that um, i needs to be incremented by 1 so it would become 6 now 6 is neither equal to 5 nor it is less than 5 so the control would be uh, shifted from the for loop and it would come up right over here and it would say a get stage now after the for loop we may write a simple thank you statement just to see that the program control has shifted let's say uh, thank you All right. and uh, let's just say we just needed uh, eight spaces back and in a new line alright so sorry it would be a new line that would be n alright so this is just to see uh, this is just to check that the program control when i has become six has shifted from the for loop to this printf statement will actually execute this printf statement which would be a thank you and then the program would wait for any character to be entered from the keyboard only then it will close alright so let's just go up here and uh, we're going to see that I has been given a condition of uh, I plus plus which is basically I uh, is equal to I plus one so every time uh, this state uh, this this for loop goes to the end uh, every time the statement reaches the true part that is over here I don't know why this brushes are so dumb uh, there you go that's better alright so every time the statement uh, reaches the end that is, it becomes true and it goes to the end of the program it checks for this statement it actually uh, executes this I plus plus so I becomes added uh, with one so when I becomes added with one it checks for this condition that is I is the I less than or equal to five if this condition still holds good that is this statement is still correct it will once again execute the true part the moment I become six it will come out of the for loop and it will execute the false statement which would be to print a thank you and it will go to the end of the program alright so let's just execute that first let's just, just check for errors whether there are any so we have a success over here and let's just run it now so uh, as you can see I has uh, it is printed I 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 and then it has said a thank you a nice note for the user so basically what has happened over here is that at first when I was equal to 0 it has printed the value of I which is 0 it has come to the end and incremented the value of I by 1 so I has become 1 it is checked for the condition which is I less than or equal to 5 and uh, mm, so I uh, 1 is obviously less than 5 so it is printed 1 again and uh, then it has once again incremented the value of i from 1 to 2 and 2 is once again less than 5 so it is printed the value of 2 and this goes on until i becomes 6 the moment i becomes 6 it checks for the condition which returns the false value that is 6 is neither less or equal to 5 so um, the program control shifts from the false statement to this false statement and uh, it prints out a thank you All right so um, that's how you basically uh, do a looping this is the for loop uh, in the next tutorial we'll uh, learn the while loop all right and uh, the while loop and uh, then the do while loop which is uh, exit control loop 
the do while uh, exit control loop all right so these are all entry control loops we'll see the while loop in the next tutorial and the uh, mm, like the uh, do while in the next tutorial as well now in the for statement we can have different things in the for statement we can have a different if else block now um let's just say we need the user to enter a value all right so printf um printf enter any number all right enter any number we would scan that scan f and it's an integer so we'll put it say in i the address of i rather now um let's just uh, take another variable over here that is n alright we'll see what n will do uh, we'll need a variable for for okay so we'll initialize as n is equal to 0 not i because i is already utilized in the user number and let's just say n would be less than um, less than the value of i whatever the users user enters say the user has uh, has entered 5 so n would go up from 0 to 1 to 3 to 4 because if we would have written equal to 5 then it would stay up to 5 but since it's less than 5 then it would go up to only 4 now n would be plus plus and uh, then uh, let's just say we need a if over here say if I'm basically confused I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking of a program I first thought of showing you something but then I see that uh, that cannot be shown without the do while loop and I'm thinking I mean like all right let's just show you one more thing all right uh printf uh printf new line um let's say we want to print a star right so you already guessed it right what this would basically do it would basically print the number of uh, times the user enters the any number and it would print a star at uh, that that many time alright so let's just see you give a success here and enter any number is asking for this enter a number which uh, if I enter it will store in the variable i let's just say 4 and um the the it is printed four stars because uh like n is equal to zero so when it's zero it prints a star n becomes one it prints another star n becomes two it prints another star and becomes three prints the fourth star because it has started from zero and n is less than i and i is four so it would print four stars so that's the entire concept of looping so i'll get back to you with the sixth tutorial in this series and that would be a big one because it would contain both the while loop and the do while loop the next part of the entry control loop and the do while which is the only part of the exit control loop so thank you for watching and uh, you can you can always get this you can always just copy that you know because this is pretty useful thank you for watching and uh, <coughs> uh, hope to see you on the next tutorial as well thank you bye bye